So we have an electron, which is moving at an initial velocity of 3.0 times 10 to the 6 meters per second in the I direction. A magnetic field it is moving through is equal to 450 microteslas in the K direction. And we have, we're looking for the magnetic force. So we have a magnetic field. Well, actually, let's start with the velocity. The velocity of our negative charge is to the right. We know the magnetic field. So if this is the I, this is the J, the positive K direction class is going to be into or out of the board? Out of the board. So the positive K direction, so our magnetic field looks like this. So let's just do the right hand rule to figure out the direction of the magnetic force, and then we'll use the cross product to show that it works. Travis, walk me through the right hand rule here. Alright, point to the right, the velocity, curl them out of the board, and then you're pointing down and you have to switch that 180 times. Therefore, the magnetic force is going to be, we should get, the magnetic force should be, our answer is in the positive J direction. We should get that as an answer. So using our cross product, the magnetic force is equal to QV cross B, the charge times velocity cross product with the magnetic field. So we have the charge of the electron, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Now, that charge is negative, so we have negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, times velocity 3 times 10 to the 6. Cross product, oh I'm sorry, we need a direction on that. I, cross product with B, the 450, or 450 times 10 to the negative 6 uh, in the positive K direction. So now, we have to be able to do the cross product. Next step for the cross product, please. Black. Uh, I would draw that thing. That thing, huh? Yeah, I would draw that thing. Uh, well, you're just going to write I, J, K. Okay, I'll write I, J, K. We're creating a matrix that looks like this. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're going to have 3 times 10 to the 6 underneath the I. Okay. 3 times 10 to the 6th. And then zeros for I, J, I, and K. J. Okay, you're going to have uh, 450 times 10 to the negative 6 underneath the K in the second row. In the second row. There you go. Yeah, there's the others. Where do we put that? Uh, yeah. First column, second column. I would put it right here. It is a scalar. Truth is, we could put it actually outside of it. It doesn't really matter. But it seems logical because it's multiplied by the i that we would put that right here. So negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 multiplied by our 3 times 10 to the 6. All of that under the i. OK. Equals what? How do we work with this? Tyler. Uh, didn't you like cover something up? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. You like cover up, like you like take the I and then cover it up vertically and horizontally. Okay, so then we're just left with this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you you get three of those when you do it all three times. Unfortunately, the it was unclear to me. Uh, help us out. Sierra. Well, you can cover it up and then you like, multiply like, one, like, one set of the diagonals to each other. And True, so give it to me. We'll start with the I one. What do we get? So we cross out the I. Uh, zero times 450 times 10 to the negative 6. It's minus uh, zero times zero. Times? times i, right? So we get rid of the i, and we're left with this. We multiply these two together, 0 times 450 times 10 to the negative 6 minus 
zero times zero. We do end up with zero, but it's good to go through this because clearly maybe some of us don't quite remember. And then we do the next one. Um, Miller. So you would have whatever you get from negative 1.6 times 10. I'll just write out the, those numbers. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. That negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times 3 times 10 to the 6th. Um, and then also times 450 times 10 to the negative 6th. Hold up a second. So we're multiplying this times this because we got rid of the whole J column here. Good? Minus 0 times 0. And then that whole thing multiplied by J. Important. We missed one small important thing. Emily. Are you supposed to subtract? That is subtracted from. And then we do the K column here. Uh, Potter up. For the K column, all right, so you do uh, negative 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 times 0 minus 0 times 0 times J. Times? J. Oh, K, K. That's OK. Yep. Now, I, we did go through that. It seems pretty clear now that the I's and the K's are both going to cancel out. We end up with just J here. So this is going to be equal to uh, these cancel outs. So we have a negative times a negative. We have a positive J. And multiply these through, please. Yeah. Uh, we forgot the three times times the negative. Thank you. Or positive six. Thank you. We will add that. So we have the three times ten to the six, and then we have the negative one point six times ten to the negative nineteen. It doesn't affect the overall answer, but thank you. Yes. Uh, what we get? Yes. No. Would it be plus all the k stuff? Like, uh, right. So this is plus. Yeah. Right. So it's so it goes back and forth. Plus minus plus minus. Two point one six times negative 2.16 times 10 to the negative 30? 16. Oh. That's OK. <laughs> and it works out to be j, just like we got using the right-hand rule. So we could have uh, just gone through and multiplied using the magnetic force is equal to QVB sine theta. Uh, we would have. QVB sine would have been 90 degrees because this angle is the angle between the, the velocity and the, the magnetic field in this particular case. Uh, but it is important you do have to be able to use the cross product.